the Zontes 350R. Hello and welcome to Overdrive. I am Sony Dutt. Like the larger Range Rover, the Range Rover Sport now is fully redesigned and comes with cutting edge technology. It also gets a mild hybrid 3 litre petrol and diesel variant. Let's find out how it feels like to drive on Indian roads. <laughs> Now the Range Rover in its newest generation has become larger, pricier and more opulent. Which means that the Range Rover Sport now also in its newest third generation really gets the chance to become that driver focused, that more manageable and more approachable version of the Range Rover experience. So today we have that car here with us to see if that really holds true. Now once you start driving you realize that again it's still completely a Range Rover just with the view out that you get. You sit not quite as high and not quite as, you know, throne-like a position as in the regular Range Rover. It's a bit more compact, a bit more cocoon, but still quite high up. You have that long bonnet flowing out in front of you. You can see the edges more or less. This low sill, again, these armrests. So yeah, it's an out and out Range Rover. The Range Rover Sport can be had with two 3-litre inline-6 mild hybrid engine options. The D350 diesel is more widely available with its 350 PS and 700 Nm, although the version you see here is the P400 petrol with its slightly more enthusiastic bent, putting out 400 PS and 550 Nm. The ZF 8-speed pairs with both and you get air suspension, adaptive dampers and a locking central differential. Of course, it's a Range Rover, so there's 4x4 and the Terrain Response 2 system, although we couldn't really test it out on this occasion. Now as for the way this P400 6-cylinder performs, with 400 PS of course performance is not lacking, but given the sheer mass of the Range Rover Sport, this SUV is quick if not outrightly fast. So moving along in traffic is really not an issue at all. And the ZF, unlike in some say German SUVs, here it's tuned a bit more softly, but again, it's not at the cost of, you know, how attentive it is. So it's always giving you that shift whenever you need it. It's just that it's doing it a touch softly. With the 35% stiffer MLA Flex architecture, the new Range Rover Sport is already quite a bit ahead of the SUV it replaces in terms of dynamic ability. This can be enhanced further with the Stormer handling pack which adds rear wheel steer, torque vectoring and anti-roll functions. There's also quite an eventful launch control function. It's easy to engage and will have the sport straining against the brakes and squatting the rear springs before shooting off. Although we couldn't quite get near the 5.7 second 0 to 100 claim time, again possibly due to these all season tyres. Now these massive 22 inch wheels look great but going a size or two smaller should be best for our conditions. The Range Rover Sport can chop and thud over our uneven city roads but it must be said that the impacts are quite well done for such a large sized wheel. Either way this fades away quickly as speeds rise and with the significant suspension travel from the air springs you don't really need to tiptoe over rough patches too. Now quite a significant change is how much of a better handler the Range Rover Sport has become. So yeah, it can't obviously hide its massive mass and the fact that it's a big tall SUV. But within those parameters, within what you expect of a Range Rover, things have moved on quite a bit. So for example, on this tight bit of road, you can still find the rhythm like the way we are moving along. It'll flow along briskly, it'll change direction without, you know, too much drama. Of course, these all-season tyres hamper it a bit but if you drive normally like any other person, these shouldn't be a problem. So what you get is a big SUV that feels confident on the move, that feels, you know, engaging almost. And yeah, that's largely because the air suspension, it's doing a really good job. It's tightened things up from how it is in comfort, so it isn't rolling around as much. And what you get is that control, but without too much of an effect on ride quality. So the ride quality remains more or less the same but you have this nice sense of control, the steering weighs up a bit, it's already quite well weighted throughout all the modes. So yeah, the Range Rover Sport, you can hustle it along if you really feel like it, if you really want to.
Now you expect a Range Rover to be inviting and the Sport does not disappoint to that end. And it starts right from the beginning with the soft closed doors, with those flush door handles. And then when you're seated inside, you realize that the seats bring themselves up to the position that you left them in. Same for the steering wheel. And it goes further than that. The massaging function will come back on if you want it to. Same for the seat heating or cooling which is a rare occurrence but really sort of gives you that sense of luxury. Yes, some of the features, for example, the auto hold and the start stop are buried deep in submenu, same for these vent controls. But that's not really a bother because you realize that those functions, you use them maybe once or twice when you've just started using the car and then you just leave them as they are. The Range Rover Sport also makes an immediate impression with the way it looks. So you have these slim elements, barely a crease and a taut, almost sci-fi look to this large SUV. With prices starting from Rs 1.64 crore, the Range Rover Sport costs quite a bit less than the full-size Rangey. In that sense, it comes quite close to offering a good glimpse of the Range Rover experience at a more approachable price point. It's not the best handling SUV at this price, but it has that same sense of luxury and gravitas that you expect from a Range Rover. Pair that with decent dynamics, competent performance and about as much tech as you would need.